How many how many docs do you think you have in your Google Drive related to Worst Hour? Just just sort of docs you started and abandoned. Oh, uh, two three million. The the amount of I think data that I must have taken up inside of the Google Drive just writing like a like three words a half baked premise a dumb sentence and just burnt and then gone forever. Don't title it so it's untitled number thirty eight. Nothing is titled. Yeah, yeah. It's like a Rimbo like poetry collection where it's like Doc number thirty four. It's a fucking. It's an. It looks like my. It looks like my spam box. <laughs> <laughs> my Google Drive looks like you would think it was my spam box at first glance. Everything looks like a virus. Right. Speaking of spam box, I'm gonna go paper now because if I get one more email from a company saying thank you for going paperless. I'm losing my mind. Do you get these emails? The thank you for going paper. Yes. Yeah. I well, get every day from a credit card company, from a bank, like every account I have. I I I go paper every single time I opt for paper. <laughs> I ask for things in writing always. When I was negotiating with a uh, legal situation, um, and I was going back and forth with people. Um, I had to often request in a way to buy time that I needed. I had to, I would have to request. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to ask you what this. What? I can't. I can't right now. But uh, I'm, I'm just. You saying, know, my lips are sealed. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm saying is that our conversations. I would request that they send me um, a copy of our conversations and the things that they said uh, we came to agreement to. Okay. And then uh, I would have to mail them a copy of things that I said and that I agreed to. And it basically all it did was just buy a lot of time. Until something got out of a window of what's what's the word I'm thinking of? Like when like say debt goes away in seven years. What is that called? A statue of limitations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was hitting a statue of limitations <laughs> by <laughs> requesting paper communication, and it fucking worked. Statue of limitations. I, I just got. I know. I know somebody can explain to me why it's good, but I, I I'm thinking. I don't know if crimes necessarily <laughs> should very, be very wild, wild west. I don't know if you should be able to beat it out by the clock, you know? <laughs> seems seems kind of crazy that if you raped somebody right. 13 years ago, wow, well, by good Lord, I don't know what I could do well, about I'll tell that. You what, fella, you're, you're uh, quite the hider. So uh, we're going to go ahead and drop the charges. Look, if we're not, I mean, we have to be completely honest with you. We're, we respect what you did. <laughs> Do they give you some kind of a certificate <laughs> like you beat the clock? Maybe they imagine, look, if you had to live underground on the lamb, that's basically like going to prison. It does make the legal system seem like it's a bit of a board game. It's a bit wacky sometimes. <laughs> we have weird rules. You land on the shore in Florida. You're a citizen. If you're Cuban. If you, No, is it just Cuban? I'm pretty sure it's just Cuba. Uh, that Yeah, that's probably because otherwise everybody would just be <laughs> yeah, everybody coming be, through Florida yeah, yeah, on no. that roll. <laughs> So if you move to Cuba, get a citizenship there, float through to to Florida. That's a roundabout way of doing it. Yeah, you could do that, or okay. you could just wait for. Uh, you and I should open up like an Airbnb in Cuba that where we can basically put people up for the legally required amount of time for them to be able to. When they close Guantanamo Bay, we'll put a bid in. <laughs> nice, <laughs> put a bid in, dude. I would love to 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 buy haunted Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> turn it into an Airbnb as an empty dude. I wouldn't even turn it into an Airbnb. I just live in there. Dude, How I, sick would it be if your premises were... I would constantly be sending you screenshots if I had it to ask your dad what the graffiti on the walls <laughs> meant, because it would all be in Arabic. Yeah. What does this one mean? <laughs> I always tell people, when you see graffiti in Arabic... <laughs> Run. <laughs> there's a, there are neighborhoods all across America where it's things have gotten so bad that you'll see... <laughs> you'll see Arabic on the wall. <laughs> I think El Centro, if you go to El Centro, San Diego, you'll go like, what in God's name? Tyler, the producer's hometown. Tyler, the producer's hometown. You'll you'll literally, there's a corner where you're like Black Hawk down. <laughs> Tires are on fire. <laughs> Nothing is, no price is set in stone. Uh, everything is, is, is negotiable. It's not set in stone, but the currency is stone. Is stone. Uh, yes. <laughs> Dude, it can be it can get real fucking bad, man. I can't picture a single neighborhood in America where you run around, you start going around, you start seeing Arabic spray painted on the walls. I know we have listeners in San Diego. They have to let me know what neighborhood it is. I believe it is a neighborhood that is occupied by the Chaldean. <laughs> what is that? The Chaldean community, which are like I think Iraqi Christians. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, these people these people are are fucking insane. These people 
are direct descendants of somebody who had the wrath of who had to face the wrath of Saddam Hussein, <laughs> right, survived right. and then got to America. <laughs> right. And just were expected to just be normal Americans. There's just no way. <laughs> even if you're like fourth generation, yeah. <laughs> even if you're fourth generation, it's just too much in your blood. It's like there's there was a comedian, uh remember that guy, Haiti? Yeah, he was from uh hey. Oh. <laughs> I mean, was that a band? No. <laughs> He was Haitian from Haiti, so he went by the name Haiti. Yeah, makes uh, sense. And he would always get in trouble for like grabbing girls' asses and <laughs> he was call all... people like all kinds of gay slurs. And you're like, do you know? Do you remember that uh, like three week fundraiser they did back in like 2009? Yeah. And you find out like every year there's a bloody coup. Yeah. And like you know, Haiti it's... is never. F- it's f- always. <laughs> it's fucked. Always. It's always in a tough situation. So if, if a guy's whistling at a chick, I mean, that's the best you can get. That's like progress. I always was like, take it easy on the guy. Yeah. Is Haiti one of those places? is where the Clintons uh, are somehow implicated in something. I mean, they're not. I don't know if they really are or if it's just like a... Well, there was a coup in the 90s that was backed by the American government that ended up in a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe a... Gen- I don't know if it was a genocide or a mass murder. I'm not sure if it was like on ethnic lines or... Sure, sure, sure. Or what- <laughs> um, let's start the show today. Uh, today we start in China. China. <laughs> oh, there you go. You lost it for a second there. China. <laughs> Dude, I think I'm really I think in, tw- <laughs> in 2021 I'm going to be kill when Trump comes back in 2024, yeah. I'm going to be ripping his his impression. Do you think when do you think his first like big rally is? He's been I think he's been, he's been doing, doing shit. fundraisers and stuff and it's all it sucks. It's such a bummer having to read the transcripts cuz it sounds super funny yeah. the shit he's saying, but you're just reading the transcripts like he gave some GOP fundraiser speech down in Florida the other day where he called Mitch McConnell a dumb son of a bitch. Yeah. And he called somebody else stupid. And then, like, he he was talking, he was making fun of Mitch McConnell's wife because okay. she was in the administration. He was ro- he was doing a lot of shit like that for a but minute, it's too. it's transcripts. It's not as fun. I mean, you can do the voice in your head, but yeah. it's not the real thing. There was one where he was giving, like, a toast at somebody's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pull it up. He was giving a toast at somebody's wedding, and he brought up like the election. <laughs> Which, I, look, I I understand. <laughs> Obviously, we don't want him to not bring it up, but he does like a look right there. Donald Trump rails <laughs> rails on Biden during a wedding you know, I speech. Just got, I turned off the news. I get all these flash reports, and they're telling me about the border. They're telling me about China. There it is. About Iran. How are we doing with Iran? How do you like that? <laughs> Oh, they were ready to make it. You know, they would have done anything. They would have done anything. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, wait, this is national security. <laughs> he's like discussing it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he's in a tuxedo with a bow tie, full tuxedo gear, and he's giving a toast at a wedding. <laughs> Apparently, this is supposed to be about somebody else. I, I want to say he is in full Donald Trump mode. <laughs> This looks like the costume of Donald Trump. Yes. Doesn't this look like Tony Clifton? Before, pre- yeah, before he was president, if you were to show up as an impersonator of Donald Trump, you would look exactly like this. He, this guy looks like he's about to ask you for a dollar on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> he looks, and he's doing like all the Trumpisms. He almost looks like, looks like a hologram. He's so fucking unreal. Well, let me see where he. I just want to see. Okay, so I don't know how long he's been going because he's already halfway through when this video starts, but we're 22 seconds into the toast. I want to see until he mentions somebody other than himself, he, like, like the people he's supposed to be toasting. He's toasting. He's toasting a, a you know a wedding party, presumably. The person, uh, he probably talked for three minutes before the person was like, I think I'm going to whip out my camera. He's going. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah he's ripping. So there was there was <laughs> undoubtedly three or three and a half minutes we didn't <laughs> yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, you get the gist. Let's see how far he goes. Negotiate now. We're not dealing with the United States. They don't, want to, they don't want to deal with us. And China, the same thing. They never treated us that way, right? You saw what happened a few days ago. It was terrible. But I just want to clarify, there was the... Uh, the border's not good. The border- China never treated us that way. There was the largest hack in the history of the world uh, last year uh-huh. <laughs> from yeah. chi- China infiltrating American security systems. So, but- I mean... He, there, there's a lot of things that one could, you know, some issues one could take umbrage with in this particular speech. So far, that's the only mystery that I've heard. Everything else, completely factual. I, I will say, it just feels like an inappropriate place to bring up the border. Yeah. <laughs> People are literally like, 
drinking champagne. <laughs> There's a guy back there with a bass. And what you see now, multiply it times ten, Jim. You would know how to handle. He's the only one I know that might handle the border tougher than me. But we have to. And the tough is in the most humanitarian way because that's what it is. What's happening to the kids? They're living in squalor. He's oh turned, my God! Did he turn it on on Biden? And you're gonna have hundreds, and you have it now. They have the airplane photos, the shops, and they call them shops. And these things are showing thousands and thousands of people coming up from South America, and it's gonna be. It's just uh, look, it's a disaster. It's humanity. This is a wedding toast. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though I empathize with him Because I know what it's like To be the wet blanket And the bummer always This is I've always been a wet blanket And a bummer <laughs> yes. Where everybody's hanging out And I just go on Some horrible story And the conversation stops and People start looking down And not looking at anybody's eyes Like I, I, I get, This is If I were giving a wedding toast It would be similarly uh, Similarly somber Here's the thing about Donald Trump And it's a problem He is <laughs> What he, mode he, he is so virile, right? <laughs> Here's the thing about he's so virile, and you forget he's seventy. <laughs> you forget he's seventy four. I thought I was looking at a twenty eight year old man. This is, if you think about it, this is what a seventy four year old man does with, <laughs> with, with, <laughs> with giving with, a microphone with issues of national security. He just <laughs> rambles it into a microphone at a wedding. <laughs> Oh my God! Wait, sober, okay. by the way, one thousand oh, percent sober. He doesn't drink. No. He doesn't drink. No, uh, his balls are probably drained though. Yeah, without it, yeah. <laughs> he's at Mar-a-Lago. Okay, he's at minute twenty-five in. The video is only two minutes and twenty-one seconds. Let's see if he gets to the toast at all. The country can't afford it because you're talking about the massive, and just incredibly massive amounts. Our school systems, our hospital systems. Everything. You know what? He's <laughs> he's no good without a without a podium. <laughs> you don't want to see his legs. Oh, wait, what did we miss? Hold on. Just say, do you miss me yet? <laughs> <laughs> He's toasting somebody else. Yes, yeah, so do you miss me? <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you right now, he has not lost it. <laughs> no. Nobody's ever gotten that. They said, that was a, that I, was a solid comedy joke, right? Like, yeah. he did this big thing about how everybody, how it's all, mm -hmm. it's getting worse and it's getting worse and it's getting worse. And, and I got boom. one question. <laughs> Do you miss me? Dude. <laughs> and then they, they, they erupt. But you're right. He does need a podium. It's not it's not comfortable looking at his legs. I, I, I really do. <laughs> but I also, my favorite talking point of his right now is he goes, I had 75 million votes. Nobody's ever gotten that many. Uh, except for the guy who got 84. But yeah. whatever. <laughs> you, you, know what? you know what it is about his legs that I don't like? I don't like seeing that much heat, dude. <laughs> Yeah, if you were looking at those predator goggles, you know, where you see uh, <laughs> it would be bright orange. It would it would actually d detach your retina. You would be blinded if you wore infrared goggles. That's what I'm saying. It's like looking God in the eyes. Yeah, yeah. You just it, it couldn't be good. It's not good for your soul. It's like pointing the International Space Station telescope, the Hubble, yeah. right at the sun. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> it's what it feels like. And they said, but you know, you saw what happened. 10:30 in the evening, all of a sudden, they said. It's a strange thing. Why are they closing up certain places, right? Uh, a lot of things happening right now. I just wanted to say it's an honor to be here. <laughs> you are a great and beautiful couple. And for many, many years. Okay, I figured it out. Dog, I figured it out. Stop. Here's what happened. That is a couple that doesn't know Trump. He dro he did a drop in toast? <laughs> I think he did, dude. I think he bumped the best man. I think I guarantee fucking to you, if you have your wedding at Mar-a-Lago, I guarantee you there's a package where you're like, <laughs> <laughs> The gold package? <laughs> I, I fucking guarantee you he's wearing a t-shirt tuxedo right now. That wasn't even a tuxedo. No, it's a bathrobe tuxedo. <laughs> It did look weird. It looked very weird. It looked like it wasn't tailored to him at all. It literally looks like they've dressed him in a costume or something. Like, like you know when you forget when, when you show up to a restaurant and they're like, we have a dress code here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they just have a – it just buttons in the back. It's got everything you need, cufflinks of <laughs> – I, I'm fucking willing to bet my entire life savings that that 
is the package you can get at Mar-a-Lago. Marriage, he'll come out and he'll say what's up. <laughs> he'll tell you the election was stolen and that kids are dying in squalor. There's no way you're having a wedding at Mar-a-Lago and not wanting to hear that. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Nobody's offended in that room. No, no, they love so it's you, you, you don't go to Mar-a-Lago and be like, I cannot believe Donald Trump showed up. He he absolutely didn't know whose whose wedding it was. You're a beautiful couple. Can imagine the best man or whoever had to follow that and just be like, "Yeah, I uh, listen. Uh, <laughs> I've known you guys. I don't have much to say about international policy." <laughs> Well, I, <laughs> I haven't talked to the Ayatollah recently. I like the uh, idea that the best man has like his set list and he's just back there crossing it out. He's like, yeah. border wall, can't talk about that now. <laughs> That's Jesus. taken. He Iran? Did he, say, did he bring up Iran? I was closing on Iran, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> You're a beautiful couple. He just, just talked about himself, how much you miss him, and then goes, you know, cheers. Real quick, this was from March 28th, so not that long ago. We're talking about a couple weeks ago. <laughs> this is so like he's he is active. This yeah. isn't like ah he did it like uh, one time really early on. He's he, by the way, he I read an article the other day and, and I we'll talk about it when it becomes a little bit more relevant, but he's foregoing building the Donald Trump presidential library cuz he's focusing on 2024. Oh, really? Yeah. He's like I'm not going to really focus on that right now. It's not really a good place to put my energy. <laughs> you think <laughs> a that he would love <laughs> you think he would love to make a building again? You know what? I think I think uh, it's almost like it's the idea of a library is so antithetical to what he's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be a waste. To- It'd be a waste to him. He wants to do like uh, the business school. Right, like that right, makes right. sense to him. He's like, all right, we could teach people about business or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Sell steaks. Sell sell steaks. <laughs> yeah, things I get. Or a magazine store. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a cigar magazine stand. It has a humidor. The Trump humidor. It would make more sense to him, and to be honest with you, to me too. Like right. if I became president, that's what I would rather do. Uh, a newsstand, a newsstand, <laughs> just Playboys, and you could get refills on your uh, on your you know blue cigarettes. Yeah, but no free refills on your coffee. No free refills on your coffee. You can get my homemade and you know date based energy drink. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, in Europe, all the uh, newsstands are owned by Arab dudes, and uh, they, all the coffee there is just Keurigs. Yeah. So you go to make coffee, the guy gets like a styrofoam cup, he pops with his bare hand, he just pops his fucking pot in there, and it's, you just yeah. see his hands all over it, and it's just like, and then he'll go, that's seven euro. Guarantee you, he's <laughs> refilling those pods with Folgers yes. every morning. Yes. He has a machine that sticks new new labels on there, but it's the same one. That dirty. It's, it's so expensive too. <laughs> if there is not, by the way, a date based energy drink, I'm moving forward with that. Dates, uh, you can get date syrup. I think getting date. I think making really cornering the market. We're talking about a huge part of the world here that we could really market this in. Can we get into Bernie Madoff? Okay, let's do it. Fuck Just it. Because you were talking about cornering the market yeah, and weird yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> Bernie Madoff, who uh, did something I still don't understand. Uh, I'm not entirely... I know he did a Ponzi scheme. Okay. I don't entirely know what he did. He ripped... A, I mean, I know he ripped like $64 billion off of people. I think he was selling them fake investment yeah it's it's one of those things where we'll (laughs) never really fully understand but in 2008 is that when he went down yeah he went to jail in eight he went to jail in 2008 he cost i think 64 billion dollars worth of losses so essentially 64 billion dollars worth of dollars that were supposed to be there not (laughs) there not there anymore (laughs) that's a that's quite a lot of money 64 billion dollars in 2008 yeah, dude. I mean, it's the biggest scam in the history of the world. It, I feel like in 2008, $60 billion was an impossible amount of money. $64 billion? I mean, the richest man in the world probably had right around there. At that point? I bet he was one of the richest men in the world. I feel like I feel like I remember growing up, Bill Gates, I used to hear Bill Gates had like $18 billion. Yeah, yeah. It was like a fucking cool yeah, thing. Yeah, so I bet ever. Madoff was, you yeah. know, that him and like some Saudi prince or whatever was probably the richest man in the world. But regarding quartering the market, so when this scam artist guy gets into prison, one of the first things he does is he buys up all the Swiss Miss chocolate powder uh-huh. out of the commissary. And he cornered the market and he started raising the value of Swiss Miss chocolate, hot chocolate packets. And then he was able to negotiate that for like nice shower shoes. He was living like a king, but he like did the exact same thing 
outside of prison, except instead of cornering, you know, $64 billion, he was cornering hot chocolate packets. Wait, Madoff did that? Bernie Madoff. Oh, because he worked in the cafe. You get jobs in prison. You get jobs. So he bought up out of the commissary all the Swiss Miss chocolate powder. Could you imagine? All of it. Could you imagine? I feel like the one break I would really want out of, pr- out of life is, I think the one good thing about prison is probably no job. Right. <laughs> I would be like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I gotta, I gotta work. I can't imagine a worse eight hours. Where you're like, I'm working and I'm in prison. By the way, right? Well, it, apparently, I, I want to play you this thing about his life in prison real quick. Uh, it's very funny. It's just like two sentences. We're pulling this up, of course, because uh, Brian Bernie Madoff died, 82 years old. From the Bernie Madoff uh, uh, died in uh, in, prison. in his prison cell, presumably in a, in a hospital. I like to picture him in prison in his prison cell. <laughs> he died of renal failure. Uh, what is that? Kidney. Oh, kidney. Renal sounds like your butthole stopped working. <laughs> well, renal failure. Renal, it sounds like piss, yeah. kind of. <laughs> yeah. <dude. laughs> if you told me his renal started failing, I'm like, oh, dude, that must have been. Really I'm sure his butthole now. was working <laughs> overtime. Honestly, at the end there, <laughs> I'm sure it was working just fine. He uh, he died 82 years old. Good life. Good life. At one point, was old? one of the richest men in the world. I'll take his life. You know, uh, uh, one of the people he uh, stole, I mean, if you look at the list of people he stole money from, mm-hmm. um, uh, Kevin Bacon was one of them. Kevin Bacon, the New Eli York Wiesel. Mets, uh, the guy from Night. No, Eli Wiesel, the Holocaust survivor. He wrote Night. Yeah, oh, Night. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Sorry. I didn't, I thought you were talking about Night Court for some reason. <laughs> I feel like uh, Night is, is one of those books that. Uh, I, I feel like I was supposed to read it in high school, but probably did not. I read it in high school. I have a copy if you want to borrow it. It's real quick. It's I, one of the only books that ever made me cry. I remember I didn't read it, but I was like, but it's because I hate reading. It's not because I'm anti <laughs> Like I remember feeling like that. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me get one thing straight That's here. That's a tough one to, yeah. Let me get one thing straight here. <laughs> this, is, this has nothing to do with... <laughs> The content. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I brought it home. My father th- threw it away. <laughs> so what do you want me to do? It's really, I had to pretend it was other things. <laughs> I was walking around pretending I was reading a Playboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, listen, to, uh, I got a couple things I made off. But first, let's, this is just a quick thing here. Penthouse to the bottom bunk of a jail cell. Newly released legal papers are giving insight. Can you pause real quick? Do we have to have that, like, catchy t- <laughs> intro? <laughs> <laughs> these people are de- these are the people who are doing these voiceovers don't get a lot of action, so they're dying to exhibit their talents. The part where they're like, from the <laughs> from the swanky penthouse, yeah. to the be- boiler room in the basement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy has. It's like, all right, we get it. Yeah, we get it. He's in the hole. Into the new prison life of disgraced financier Bernard Madoff. For one, Madoff now sleeps in the bottom bunk of a cell he shares with a drug offender. By the way, I feel like when they say bottom bunk, they're calling him a bitch. It's kind of like the way they hit bottom bunk where it's like everybody knows the bitch gets the bottom bunk. So they're letting you know. But so he's got a drug offender. But listen to this next line. He eats pizza cooked by a child molester. (laughs) 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 That makes me laugh every time I hear that. (laughs) They have a a pizza chef, apparently, who's a child molester. I wonder how... Uh, I wonder how he wound up pizza chef. But he doesn't cook anything else. He's just all day. He's just (laughs) tossing dough. (laughs) Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Worst Hour Podcast. We have a great one for you. On today's show, by the way, everything in between, not just ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Everybody's welcome here. You got five bucks? Not everybody's well, welcome. Yeah, if you have, if you don't have five bucks, you are not welcome. Right, everybody with five bucks is welcome. If you don't have five bucks, even if you're not, I need to know you have five dollars. If you, you, not even if you're giving it to us. Yeah. But if you don't have five dollars, we don't want you as a listener. Nobody, you better not be listening to the show <laughs> kicking tires without a fucking, yeah. <laughs> without five bucks in your pocket. Open up your wallet and touch a five dollar bill, or you turn this shit off. This is like a date, basically. We don't want this. I treat this podcast as an investment into a relationship with mm-hmm. you. So if you're showing up without five fucking dollars, eventually, without the promise of five dollars at some point. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Even if like potentially, you know, maybe somebody owes you some money, they're supposed to Venmo you it and they're a little late on it. Yeah, you can listen. But if you're just sitting on zero with no, <laughs> that's it. We don't want you. We don't have any. We've said it Got once. Nothing we'll to say, say to you. The downtrodden. Look, there are plenty of places where you're welcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Ellis Island, sure, yeah, whatever, whatever. Angel Island, have a good time. But we want the uptrodden. 
uptrotten only. <laughs> yeah. People who have already been on the up and up and are now just sort of on a, you know. They deserve it. They've worked their asses off. We give them a little laughs. You know what I mean? These poor people haven't done shit yet. Why do you need a laugh? I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, why are you so tired? You Sitting know on all mean? that potential. Yeah, that's exactly true. That is exactly true. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been trying to figure out how we can do uh, more maybe material that would attract uh, wealthier the people. Yeah. I was thinking maybe we could do like the origin of the monocle. Like we could do stories <laughs> that only make sense to, to people who are of a certain class. We would do like Andy Rooney things where like, why do they call it a bow tie? It's like if you advertise, if you have a, if you have like a website and you sell something and you and you say I'm a, it's it's a thousand dollars. The only people who are going to call you are people who are like, I'm thinking I about could spend I could spend a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe we do that kind of a thing where it's like we do a lot of stuff. I'm like, what are really like rich people interested in? What if we change this podcast name to a thousand dollar hour of the week? <laughs> oh, a thousand dollar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We it, I like that. Thousand dollar hour of the week. We should have a. Uh, we should change our Patreon, <laughs> our Patreon <laughs> levels to five thousand, ten thousand, and twenty five thousand. It's like Mar a Lago. You just need like three or four people. That's it. You're fine. We are. Uh, we're coming to you live from WHP V. V. Studios. Yep. There's a uh, plastic on the walls of WHP six. It's being constructed at the moment. Yeah. But, uh, uh, so he's one of the last couple episodes of WHPV. Prior to uh, you guys didn't hear it. Obviously, it wasn't recording yet. We were setting up the studio earlier. This uh, and Brian actually sat and broke one of the chairs. Yeah, it, it, the chair was breaking though. It's not like I've got I'm a it whale. Was, it was wobbly. <laughs> it was wobbly. I I know. I I should know. I. Uh, sat in it last week during the infamous switcheroo. The uh, <laughs> what, what, what is that? The what is that movie where where the fucking Freaky Friday? Yes. Yeah, we both pissed in the same fountain or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like big where you you like get your mom to fuck your son or whatever happened in that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're in the dad's body or something. It's gonna go down in history. I imagine it's gonna get nominated for a worst day this year. Oh, absolutely! Podcast of the year. For we, sure. We should do a worst e like a worst hour. Uh, we win all the awards. <laughs> <laughs> we nominate everybody. Well, it's actually a great point. So we would we would know for sure that both of us would event would be winners in some things. What would right? the trophy be? It'd be multiple trophies. You know what I mean? Greatest, for example, you know, greatest moment captured on air. Maybe we nominate that episode where I where I fell through the chair live. Right, greatest moment not captured on the air, which is when I fell through a chair. Off, yeah, and we bring both broken chairs up on the stage. We both end up getting. That's uh, the trophy. We spray paint the broken chairs gold. Yeah, we end up getting reward. Greatest, you know, greatest. Oh, greatest rant. Right, it's like you know, we nominate one of our great rants. That'd most be a tough one. Most annoying food Brian is eating on the air. <laughs> I play various episodes where you. <laughs> We're eating apples. And eating fucking red curry with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, what are you eating? Pop rocks? Why? What's up? It's just a loud thing to eat while you're on yeah, the air. Just flat, just Ethiopian hand eating food. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a hummus. I got a big naan or whatever yeah. in front of me. <laughs> And I'm just, yeah, yeah. You're paying a Postmates driver. <laughs> <laughs> I can pick I can pick up you guys having a conversation on the mic. What's that? Hold on, Ramsey. What, what was that, 850? Yeah, yeah all right, tips included. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, coming at you, by the way, a day late. You guys, what, what would you give a Why would you even fucking care? Yeah, the show's fucking free, so therefore there is no day late. I, I'm, I'm serious. If you're sitting there waiting on this episode, Get lost. Did you call your stimulus check late? Yeah, exactly. No, you get it when you get it. People, this show is like a $1,600 check for free every fucking week. Every single week, it is as good as a stimulus. It really is. I'm stimulated. I feel like on a regular basis, you and I dispense at least $1,600 worth of knowledge. Uh, yeah, if, you are, if you're a young... Well, college, well, you can, like college rates. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's astronomical. It doesn't really make sense. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also, I was going to say, if you're a young investor, you could have made millions just listening to this podcast over the, over the pandemic. Over the pandemic, you would have at least, you would have at least turned uh, $100 into $600, $700 easy. Dude, are you kidding me? I turned $200 worth of Ethereum into like $280. That could have only <laughs> happened through this podcast and this podcast only. Um, have we plugged our Patreon yet? I feel like no, we, did. we have not. Patreon.com slash W Hot W bonus episode, bonus content. 
dubbing the episodes now in Arabic. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're going to, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen old kung fu movies. Yeah. We're going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing in Arabic. Full episodes. A lot of, of you have been asking for it. So <laughs> a lot of people are like, listen, I can tell I would like it, but I don't speak English. I only speak Arabic. It, it, it really sucks because we're now burning most of the Patreon funds on because I got to hire another yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we're also doing uh, in Arabic Braille. Yeah. So you can, submit, we'll mail you a transcript in Braille in Arabic. I just can't possibly do both the voices it, it wouldn't make any sense to the listeners so yeah yeah the guy who plays brian <laughs> brian <laughs> brian brian <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> brian <laughs> oh that's just like baba used to say <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's look man it's worth every it's worth every penny Get it now, by the way, while it is five dollars, because Brian and I are literally thinking about going to ten thousand dollars. Yeah, ten thousand dollars. That's the intro one. Fifteen thousand <laughs> yeah, yeah. dollars. That's like the one where we we give you a shout out. Yeah, for ten thousand dollars, you just get the episodes. <laughs> for <laughs> you just get for fifteen thousand dollars, we'll give you a wedding toast. We give you the wedding toast. But you got to pay for the hotel room and the airplane ticket. Twenty five thousand dollars. It's seriously, if you knew somebody was giving you twenty five k a month. You would be out. You'd be like whatever they want. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. fucking their, their thing. I'd be I'm getting fifty five gallon drums, throwing bodies and lie. Trump, <laughs> whatever is, you need. Trump is gonna do that for the next forty years of his life. <laughs> Just, when he's a hundred and ten, he'll be that's giving all, wedding toasts. That's all you want. You gotta get well, one gig so that you can just fucking do uh, appearances for the rest of your life, dude. That's Obama on his speaking engagements. Obama's like a billionaire off of his speaking engagements. Oh uh, yeah, every all of them, all the presidents, they're all six figures. Which one would you pay the most to see talk live? Um, like a private engagement, you get you and your buddies. Uh, George Bush, George Bush, without a question. Herbert Walker. <laughs> oh, the first. No, no, I'm sorry. Not Herbert Walker. W. Uh, w. I was going to say living. We don't want to invite everybody. Of course. W. Without you, a doubt. W. w. You think he'd be the funnest? Oh, he'd be, he'd be so good, dude. He'd be a good time. I'm not, me and my friends, we're not connecting with Barack. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be like, talking about too much fucking constitutional law. And he'd be trying to talk to us about, like, well, listen, here's the thing. The drones were a little complicated. Like, we don't want to talk about yeah, that yeah. shit, dude. Get out of here. I don't listen to Jay Z. Talk to us about when you smoked weed in Occidental. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did Coke. Did, did he do Coke? At Occidental, he did Coke. That was the big, uh, I remember they used to try to get Obama on that one. Like, I guess because he had ri- he, he wrote, wrote it in his, his book, book the had- something of hope. That's the why. That's why you got to be auspices of hope. What was that book called? This is what I tell people all the time: don't write a book too early. You can't. <laughs> Barack Obama, and God bless him, he was a young black man. I don't think he saw presidency in his future, so he's like, ah, I'll write a book. I no, that book was to launch his campaign. It didn't. It didn't come out. He was already a senator. He had already given his DNC speech. Was that was that the audacity of hope? Yeah, the audacity of hope. Yeah, dude. Of course, I know the title of that book is a <laughs> fucking great title for a book, dude. Uh, let me see the audacity of hope. I I've, pu- publishing date. Yeah, man. You well either way. You don't. You gotta. You gotta be ready to go for the fucking gold when you write your book. It's sort of my point. Remember I mean, when he said the N word on Marin? That was a big one too, and he talked about doing coke at Occidental in that interview. Oh yeah, yeah. They I mean, what was it? Was that the Ice House where you, they they like have like some old picture of him there or something like that? Am I am I mistaken? I, I don't know. The I Pasadena don't. Ice House, which is a comedy club right by uh, Occidental College, which is the co- the college Barack Obama went to. And there's for, a picture of Obama at the Ice House. I think I would so. love to know who he saw. <laughs> <laughs> it's like probably like who would have that been George Lopez probably or something. The Audacity of Hope came out oh, 2006. Yeah, yeah, he was presidential writer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that was he didn't write a book too early. No, he 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 he, he did it on time, man. He knew what was up. Well, listen, um, today's show, fantastic show, by the way. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, what's going on here with. Um, the uh, Biden administration, uh, of mm-hmm. course, withdrawing um, from Afghanistan, Afghanistan. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry Jesus. to say. I could tell that you were about to correct me. Yeah. I didn't get a medal in Operation Enduring Freedom to hear that country disrespected like that. Of course, we'll get a critical update from the world of, uh, of monkeys. Uh, <laughs> obviously, a subject that's near and dear to this show's heart. You could go anywhere. Listen. You could go to podcasts to get all sorts of news for, you know, like, uh, hey, what's going on with the government or whatever. Right. But, when it comes to just general monkey news, we're the one. We did a Patreon episode. Uh, an entire episode was uh, on monkey hijinks. On the it was it was titled "When Monkeys Attack." It was monkey yeah. hijinks, and and on here's the thing. 
here's what I liked about that episode is that it, it really took the point home that having a monkey seems like a good idea. <laughs> Sure. I, I mean, if you before we had done our research and you said, I'm going to give you a monkey, I would say, I don't see the downside. I would say, uh, well, obviously, you know, it's an extra hot pocket. <laughs> I'm going to have to make every day. Right. Extra diaper, you know, mine and his. <laughs> monkey. Here's the one. My only complaint about monkeys. Can I be real? Please. Every monkey's asshole. <laughs> it's all it's a mess. It's a mess. It is a. It's like, do you guys all have herpes? Like, yeah. It's red. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's wet. It's yeah. Ass. <laughs> the word is hole. It's supposed to go in like a hole, but it's, it's a swollen hole. It's a swollen <laughs> wet. Yeah, you just want to put Vaseline on it or ice. Like, do you need some ice? <laughs> no diaper quite goes over it. Yeah, like, yeah. Run, run. It always looks like it's just been shit in the. It, it looks like uh, somebody stepped on a landmine. Right. But you go up to like ape, beautiful assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice assholes. Like silverback gorillas, beautiful assholes. They're eat- you know what it is? Those gorillas are eating vegetables and shit all day yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. These guys are just eating whatever they, they find when they break <laughs> into some Indian guy's kitchen. <laughs> you guys are eating like <laughs> rat sausage. <laughs> like they're eating already yeah. shit that's pretty rough. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, these are these monkeys are are, are yeah, pigeon really meat. <laughs> got the fucking worst. So we'll get an update on those guys uh, real quick <clears throat> before we uh, jump into the show. Let me just say this: follow the show, uh, Worst Hour Pod, all social media. We appreciate all the. We get lots of tweets and feed you know feedback and stories are tagged in. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, some, yeah. I really resonated with somebody on the Patreon about. My experience going into a bank last week. So we love that. Feel free to do that. Write us, of course, worst of the week at gmail.com. Check out our YouTube channel. Coming back in May. And I'm serious this time. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me at Ramsbad, uh, big ass Ram Dog on TikTok, uh, at Ramsbad everywhere else. <laughs> My man Brian here at Brian J. Vokey on Twitter. Uh, at Mr. Brian Voki on Instagram. Um, and of course, I already said it, but join our Patreon. Uh, let's jump real quick and let's just do a quick, let's start you with the check in with the monkeys, let's check in with the monkeys first. What's going on in the world of monkeys? Okay. So there's, you know, there was three interesting monkey, uh, current event issues that have been happening here. Now this is a, we'll start with a cute one. Uh, the, not what should we call the segment? Not monkeying around or bana- down to monkey banana business. Take- <laughs> <laughs> do a little banana business. <laughs> All right. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's peel into this story. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. So two dozen fucking monkeys escaped a German zoo. Oh, <laughs> two <dude>. dozen. That's <laughs> 24 monkeys escaped a German uh, zoo. By the way, I got to tell you, um, after um, Auschwitz, yeah. Uh, whenever you see like a gate entrance with German written on it, it's it, it's done. You can't do that anymore, Germany. I yeah. <clears throat> I was gonna say these guys are fucking. We should be really worried about these monkeys because they're probably <laughs> brilliant. Think about how good the engineering was probably behind those prisons. Oh, absolutely. A German prison is probably masterfully planned. Yeah, a German zoo. Yeah, I would imagine that they. It's like exactly what they kept Kong in in Skull Island. Just exactly. Like that dome. Those what? monkeys are incredibly highly intelligent. Mm-hmm. If they see the right fucking sunset, they're evolving. I yeah, promise they're, you. They're probably all reading like Nietzsche. <laughs> like they're yeah. probably all like nihilist, existentialist German <laughs> monkeys wearing fucking turtlenecks. Does it say what kind of monkeys they it are? It does. And I, I've been avoiding that. I'm, I'm bummed you asked me because I, I have no idea how to say I, I, It's Barbary. The Barbary macaque. Oh, they're macaque. Is that a macaque? Is that how you say that? <clears throat> yeah, that's macaque. You've heard the macaque, but you've never seen it before. It's the worst hour of the week with Brian Vokey and Ramsey Badawi. I can't I can't help that I find that funny. There's nothing you can there's nothing you can do, no amount of comedy training you can Especially put me through. When you picture Ramsey's cock having a serious Arabic <laughs> accent. <laughs> when I come. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Uh, let's see. The Barbary macaque, commonly known as Barbary apes, escaped from the zoo uh, in Laughlin, southwest Stuttgart, 
and not far from the Swiss border. Oh, these guys are going straight for Swiss. I'm sure there's no extradition over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That what the smart monkey. You took it right out of my hands. I was like, monkey's like, if we can just get to Switzerland over the Alps, they won't extradite us. Dude, those guys did not. They didn't extradite Assange. Trust me, these guys yeah. have no standards. No, yeah, they would be like, "What monkeys are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what monkeys." The animals apparently took advantage of the nice weather and spent the afternoon on the edge of a forest near the zoo. Yeah, they were sunbathing. So th- that's why I thought it was funny. So they escaped, and the German zookeepers realized that they were gone, and they started looking for him, and they couldn't find him anywhere. And so they started running around the forest looking for him, and then they found him all just fucking spread out, like with their hands behind their backs, just getting sun on them. And they were like, all right, guys, time to go back to the zoo. And the monkeys were like, all right. Uh, they just go back to the zoo. Monkeys are, or macaques specifically, are the smaller monkeys, right? They're not like fat monkeys. They're, they're decent size. They're I mean, a good-sized monkey. Yeah, yeah. If you saw one, you would be terrified. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like it's not like a little guy who's going to pickpocket you. It's a guy who's going to bash your fucking face in. Yeah, I see. You know, I did. I, I think I've talked about it on the show, but I, I did go to a sanctuary where I uh, I did hang out with some monkeys pretty recently, and uh, they're they're all pretty terrifying. Those, you know, yeah. the smallest monkey is pretty scary. I don't like animals that have the same eyes as me. That's why I don't like huskies. If you watch, have you ever seen any of the videos of, uh, uh, by the way, you think quite highly of yourself. No, I'm not saying I have those you're beautiful like, Alec like, Baldwin. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I don't like looking at, at those huskies with those gorgeous blue gems. <laughs> Easy. No, no, Easy Steve no. McQueen. I've seen humans. Alec Baldwin has husky eyes. <laughs> All right? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So if I'm saying. looking, I don't want Alec Baldwin's eyes in a fucking canine. I mean, you have pretty eyes, but I'm not going to say <laughs> that your husky level pretty German eyes. German Shepherd at best, bucko. A German Shepherd at <laughs> very best. Pipples have human eyes. You ever see those videos where they uh, are, are, are hunting baboons in, uh, in like, you know, whatever, Z- whatever. Zambia? Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, you know. What? You mean some, like, American dentist type thing? They No, they hunt they hunt them and they eat them. Like, the tribe eats oh, them. It's, oh, it's oh. that kind of thing. But it is bizarre because of that thing. The what eyes, if the ass was the best tasting part that's, of the baboon? That's, that's what the unfortunate thing is. is, is it probably is. That would be such a bummer. Baboon ass is probably all fucking perfect. They're like, <laughs> they're like look, you're not going to believe me. You're going to think we're pranking you. And we're not pranking you, but the ass is the best part. Dude, that would be the best way for them to get just Whitey. <laughs> Whitey who is insisting on dropping in on their village. Some Dutch like colonialist <laughs> is coming in and he take prank him to eat a baboon ass. They're like, baboon asshole is, of course, the one. We give it to the one we respect it's the most. It's a delicacy. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to start eating a baboon's ass. They give him the whole ass, like with the hole and everything. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know where to do start. I go. Do Just I stick in, big guy? Do I? I would just start sucking the asshole. <laughs> That's how I would assume it would have to be. Do, yeah, they're like, listen, just stick your tongue through the asshole, and you will have flavors that your palate could never dream up. Like this, <laughs> dude. It's so it's so fucking. It, when they hunt these baboons, it is quite. It is so. It's almost a match of wits. I mean, the baboon. <laughs> I'm not going this. Well, I, if I saw a baboon, I would be like, this guy's probably almost as smart as I am. Fear not. We'll cut that out. <laughs> I met all of humanity. It is <laughs> the way the baboon reacts when it's cornered and it realizes like what is exactly going on. It's got a very human look in its eye. Like it, it looks very much like it's crystal clear what's going on. It knows there's this is over. And then they basically like crucify it when they kill it. So they'll like kill it. They'll put it on the stick and then they'll like kind of like roast it. And it's like kind of, you know, you see, the, it's got right. arms. They're, it's, they're trying to distribute the heat equally. So they spread the thing out in kind I, of a crucifix I, it, position. It just comes up kind of crucifix-ish. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's pretty, it's pretty tough to look at. I wonder how tasty it is though. I still, but you know, I, I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> you, you were crying. I like when people do that. <laughs> oh no, I respect it. It's yeah, cool. I mean, the cultures are cultures, bro. I love all of them. <laughs> Those guys are jacked, though. So if the baboon if, hunters, yeah, it, it's it's one. I'm telling you, man, there is not a a ounce of fat, 
just perfect, perfect it's like muscular the opening tone. Scene to Apocalypto, where it's you know, have you seen that one? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 here's the thing: they couldn't actually get anybody to to look as good as these guys actually looked. Right. Shirtless, fucking just perfect calves. <laughs> All right, I get it. It was great, dude. <laughs> you want to keep talking about their bodies? I'm telling you, you show if you told me monkey jerky would make me look like that, <laughs> I fucking would be like, let's do it. All I have to do is kill that kind of human looking <laughs> thing right there. All I have to do is defeat myself. Yeah. Oh, dude. Um, All right. Next in monkey news, Elon Musk's Neuralink. Um, uh, it, they, there's a, that's the name of the company as well as the chip. The, uh, Neuralink is a company that invented a Neuralink chip that is supposed to go into your brain hardwired. And uh, a lot of interesting prospects for that. Um, but they show a monkey who has a Neuralink already in his head. Yeah. It's like a hole the size of a quarter they put in your skull, mm-hmm. and then they put a chip in there and thread it into your brain. Yeah. And this monkey can now play Pong. You know that game Pong where the two paddles and there's a ball? It's like yeah. an old Atari game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can play it with his mind now. Um, oh, like he can move the cursor? Shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. So they show him first playing a game with a cursor. And um, he's, by the way, this is either humans have de-evolved to monkeys or monkeys have evolved to humans because he's sucking on some kind of <laughs> sweet juice, basically a big gulp, like a 7-Eleven big gulp, and he's gaming. He's just sucking down <laughs> some sugary liquid and gaming. He's legit <laughs> licking a fucking giant, like, straw, straw. And, like, he really does look like a gamer, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's sitting on one of those chairs. <laughs> I have no idea what direction evolution is headed in this video. I don't know. So what's going on is he's not even quite playing pong it's like it's no like, this is the first video got it got this it. isn't okay. pong so this is but just this showing is a pretty, game it's a pretty com it's a pretty you know it's a game that requires without a doubt intellect you need to see a square and then you need to move the cursor into the square i'm telling you i wouldn't get it right first run around on a lot of these <laughs> <laughs> no no i would not get this right also he hasn't stopped for one second drinking soda <laughs> uh, no, he's, he's, um, i guarantee you it's mountain dew i guarantee you it's mountain dew so that's the first video now here's the video of him playing Pong, and I'll post this obviously in the show notes. Oh, so by the way, okay, I see, I see. So in a lot of these videos, he's he's playing, he's moving the joystick, but they're actually in that video specifically that you just played. They specifically show that the joystick is not plugged in. Uh, so the oh, he was moving that with his mind. He was moving that, but they per- show one with no joystick whatsoever. Oh, do they show one with no joystick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Just yeah. Give me one quick second. It's not in here. That um, video has it unplugged to show you that the monkey was moving it because he doesn't know. He doesn't yeah, yeah. know that he's not moving it with the with the right. He, it makes sense that your brain would send even you know more clear neuro you know transmitters. Yes, if you if had you a ha- thing in your hand, if you were moving it exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, Check this out. No joystick. Oh my god! So he's literally just playing uh, the computer with just his mind, dude. Yeah, he's like with his monkey mind and, he's and his neuralink chip, and he's just deep throating this fucking yeah, metal. Yeah. This metal. He does <laughs> so, look like he's hitting a vape. Dude, could you imagine? How does Elon Musk have so much fucking time on his hands? Um, it's called knowing how to hire. I can't get this podcast out on Wednesday. <laughs> this motherfucker's got uh, is doing a brain chip and yeah, Tesla. He's got monkeys doing ESP. Okay, so uh, in the last uh, bit of monkey news, um, India arrests two men who used monkeys to steal cash from unsuspecting victims. This picture of them arrested, <laughs> by the way, uh, check the show notes for uh, the article, uh, features them... <laughs> <laughs> it looks it's two officers uh holding holding their <laughs> holding their hands uh in what appears i i, I can't tell if they're <laughs> i don't know who's in trouble uh, i can't tell if, if they're in trouble or if they're just proud fathers <laughs> it, it, i really don't know what's going on there's there's two men who i i assume are arrested <laughs> And the other two are the officers, and they are interlacing fingers, holding hands with each other. Yeah, I mean, this is real hand holding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that what handcuffs are there? <laughs> it's, just it's, an honor, it's an honor system. <laughs> I'll say this: I wouldn't hold my girlfriend's hand like that. I think I don't know no. her well enough. I no, don't know her well enough to hold my hand like that. And imagine how hot it is there. The sweat <laughs> that is in those palms. <laughs> Oh, my God. It's humid there. I mean, there's monkeys, so it's humid. I don't think there's any arid monkeys. Oh, I would hate to see how that what they did with the monkeys. 
<laughs> is they there... probably made them police officers. <laughs> like, you know, like when you catch like a check thief. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like, like okay. Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those monkeys now have these weird. Also, the police there, they, they like, I love, I, we've talked about it a million different ways, but I think it bears repeating. I love how they just kind of, like, uh, just take on vague militaristic like just they've seen different <laughs> uniforms and that's what a cop like they have like in the american army the infantry you get a baby blue rope yeah. that goes from your shoulder they have that rope on their shoulder for i don't know why i uh, think each of them are i think what's cool about the military uh, in, in in some other countries is that it seems like do, do whatever you want to do <laughs> <laughs> See, express yourself <laughs> Yeah, it's like they would do like a movie like costume closet. Yeah. It's like, go ahead and pick out it's what like... you think a cop looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure your shins are covered up. Um, so, okay. okay. So what, what, what is exactly, what is it that they're being charged with? Because <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, being... your honor, the monkeys did the crime. And therefore, my, uh, my, both of my clients are innocent. Can you show me somewhere in the Indian law book where it says it's illegal to accept cash from a monkey? <laughs> That's all I did. A monkey procured the cash and then handed it to me. What am I supposed to say? I, I, Where did this come from? He doesn't speak <laughs> whatever I speak. <laughs> he doesn't speak English. I love the idea that the judge agrees and we sentence both monkeys to death. <laughs> death by hanging. <laughs> Town square. <laughs> so two men <clears throat> who roamed the Indian capital using monkeys to rob unsuspecting victims, have been arrested, New Delhi police uh, said on Saturday. New Delhi, I mean, boy, they just had no idea how delicious that was going to sound in America. <laughs> I know. I was excited. I was like, ooh. <laughs> the pair were apprehended after one victim complained to officers that three men were carrying monkeys, uh, had surrounded and robbed, <laughs> robbed him <laughs> Of 6,000 rupees. 80 bucks. 80 bucks, a local police op uh, official told the AFP. Uh, authorities across India have been grappling with the menace posed by, <laughs> by, by monkeys in Delhi and other populated cities <laughs> where they often enter homes in search of food. But, and I do want to emphasize, is this is a really important thing. I want to emphasize this before we uh, move on to the next story. It is illegal for Indians to capture uh, monkeys. And it has been since 1972. Yeah. So I don't know what was going on in 1971. <laughs> so I, I love, I would love to be the guy who really struck the movement, you know, struck right, a chord right. with the people. Like, we got to step in, man. Yeah. There are monkeys. Cat, there are cages of monkeys all over the streets. I just bought this house, and my neighbors got monkeys <laughs> screaming all all night long. But I like the idea that it's like it's like how we talk about that constitutional law where you you, uh, you don't have to give quarter to a soldier. Like they don't have that law. So like a monkey just enters your home and you can't do shit about it. He's just eating your food, <laughs> just staring at you, probably jerking off and shitting and just. It's not like you could call the cops, and, and the, it's not like the monkey's going to have a reason to leave. They have leave. thumbs so they can eat everything in the house. They respect no law but their <laughs> weird monkey law, yeah. where it's like you can't pee certain places. They're just staring you right in your eyes, and they're like, bitch, I know the law. They are a huge problem, and we didn't even get to the half of it when we were in our Patreon special. We'll have to revisit when monkeys attack. In South Africa, baboons are just like robbing full villages. People have to get like guns to like shoot off the, the baboons. The baboons it's are going to have guns soon, too. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a problem. I mean, once the Neuralink baboons get escape, it's going to be... <clears throat> <laughs> Neuralink this... baboons escaping the lab. Folks, you heard it here first. This is either going to be awesome or this is going to be really bad. That's a safe bet. <laughs> so, is there a chance that it's just mediocre? Somewhere in the middle. Neur Neuralink? Do you think there's a chance that there's a medium-sized dog in your neighborhood? Yeah, zero. Zero. Okay, so um, let's stick it with India. Yeah, let's, since we're already there. Yeah, we're already in India. Let's kick it here. It's, um, it's it not only <laughs> six thousand miles away. Let's see. Let's take the uh, four hundred thousand rupee flight. Yeah, let's take our shoes off. Let's. <laughs> no, I'm keeping my shoes on. Let's take everything else off <laughs> right here too. Um, you're referring to uh, the 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 story here about the uh, crowds flocking to the Ganges River. Yeah. Uh, and of course, being a huge COVID problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, so this is a Hindu or Hindi. I forget what, how you uh, 
this is a Hindi celebration. Uh -huh. um, and apparently they do it every year. They bathe in the this in, river. In the Yankees River. You if, bathe in there. You can go wild in the Yankees. If your religion has to make an annual holiday where you have to wash yourself, it's it's you're looking at a pretty tough <laughs> pretty tough religion where they're like, listen, at least once a year, get your ass in the water. I'm not sure. Here's the thing. I saw this and immediately thought seems like a you know like a dangerous thing i i there would be no way that i would do that and then i realized it's got to be something fun about that dude why is everybody else doing it <laughs> they all look like uh um happy gilmore's caddy yes they, <laughs> like every they single have, like person. dreadlocks yeah it looks like reggae on the river <laughs> it does not, not and by the way <laughs> not a lot of great bods i'm seeing to be completely honest with but you. i bet due to their religion they're very comfortable with those bodies Ganges River, as far as I know, is sort of like a anything goes kind of, <laughs> kind of situation. It's considered like technically international waters. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, there's a big there's a big issue there. There's gambling canoes on there. <laughs> is that the river where they got they had to keep telling people like you can't shit near? Yes, <laughs> you got you can't, man. Yes, that's a rough time, man. Well, uh, hey, you know what? I have a feeling none of these guys are going to get COVID nineteen. Uh, turns out the the Monday following this festival, it was the single largest day of co new COVID infections ah, in the world. All right. So exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was worth it. Uh, I mean, it looks fun, dude. It looks really fun. I mean, it's a party. There's hundreds of thousands of people just chilling in a river. Completely naked. It looks like it's all dudes. <laughs> Completely nude, dude. <laughs> It's all dudes. It's a giant sausage trust. I would be one of the dudes in the orange robes. Well, I'll tell you what, though, man. There's something kind of freeing about that, which is like, you know what? It's just the guys. Who cares about our bodies, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's just let it hang, dude. I might even shit. Listen to that. Yeah, dude. That's this, everybody in a river. This is like if if Mardi Gras was at like a raging rivers. If, if Mardi Gras was like really weird, <laughs> that's what it would be. Um... Dude, I would love to go. I'm serious. This is something that bums me out about COVID-19 is that I don't think I'll ever get to go to shit like this now. <laughs> no, no, it'll never happen again. He says, as you can see, we're urging people to wear masks. By the way, when he says, as you can see, we're urging people to wear masks. And that, again, a hilari hilariously military uniform for this cop. But um, <laughs> he uh, he says, as you can see, we're urging people to wear masks. And then they cut to the crowd and uh, there's like 100,000 people. There's not a single mask in sight. This guy's got like three stars from Hot Topic. On <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> on his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, he's like got like airborne wings uh, sir does your badge say rage against the machine <laughs> according to your badges here you're a world war ii veteran <laughs> you're a female body inspector <laughs> uh, uh, that's the dead kennedy's logo <laughs> he is uh, a really serious looking guy and he's the only one wearing the mask <laughs> and he has to i'm honestly so fucking sad that i'm not gonna go to this this year this yeah, looks dude, like I... so much more fun than like burning man or anything like oh, that absolutely <laughs> Burning Man is lame, dude. This is where look at that <laughs> big sexy men just rubbing their tummies with. I'm sure that river's super clean too, <laughs> dude. <laughs> hey, a chick. All oh, right, look yeah. at that. Hey, mama. Yeah. Oh, look at that guy's coat. There's a <laughs> cock right in between the guy, the women's faces. <laughs> I was like trying to look at these chicks, and there was two of them looking at each other, and in between them was just a giant hog. <laughs> hey man, that is a that's a wild time, and I gotta tell you, dude, I'm fucking bummed out that I'm that I I just like I can't. There's just no no point in history moving forward where I'm gonna feel <laughs> comfortable there. <laughs> just I mean, move. Just... Normally, wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> But this, you know, COVID really, just, what a stick in my spokes. You know what I mean? Oh, man, dude. I mean, you would be there, right? 2021 is, is 2022. When I'm vaccinated and we know that my blood isn't clotting or anything like that, I'm going to go to, to, uh, to you know, Genghis Ripper. Yeah, yeah. And just fucking party. <laughs> well, next year for this, for whatever this yeah. is. See, Mardi Gras is a nice Catholic holiday. That's a nice Hindu holiday. Do you have any holidays where people party like that? Uh, no, I think I, you know, we have Hajj, right? Which is the yeah. once a year you go to Hajj and Hajj is pretty sick. Have you ever seen Hajj before? I've seen photos. It's packed. Have you ever seen the video of them doing the circle pit around the the Kaaba house? No. Of, house of Allah. Uh, just uh, search, uh, uh, by the way. So part of the Hajj ritual, Hajj, of course, uh, 
I mean, I'm not gonna, it feels ridiculous to saying this to our listeners who are uh, mo- mainly devout is uh, Muslim. Uh, actually, our listeners are devout Islamists, even. Yeah. Um, but ha- <laughs> that, that can't be it. <laughs> no, no. What? What? What is? <laughs> what? What are you? What did you search? Kelsar uh, bel Hajj dance. No, I think this is something else. This lady. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, this so is. What, what do I type in? Uh, Hajj. Search Hajj uh, Kaaba. Uh. Yeah, that's good enough. So um, this is part of the the ritual here of uh, uh, of Hajj. You got to go around the house of Allah a bunch of times. Which is that black square building? Which is the black square building? This is the part of the religion that. Uh, and hey, I I'm not gonna, of course, you know, talk negatively about the religion. Sure. During this holy time, did we kiss already? Yes, we. Uh, I think we did. Just in case we did. Okay. <laughs> Ramadan. Oh, three? Ram- I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Ramadan Mubarak to you, my friend. For our listeners, uh, where are I have OCD. I'd have to go even. <laughs> so now I'm like, just I can't stop. <laughs> um, we are, of course, celebrating 30 crazy days of Ramadan, <laughs> Ramadan yeah, here yeah. at the Horse Tower Nation. Absolutely. Uh, if you're hearing me sip on my tea, the sun is down. The sun is down as can be. Um, yeah, dude, I cracked open some dates as soon as that sun went down. So the Kaaba is uh, is uh, sort of this vestige of old uh, you know, religion, paganist religion. Mm-hmm. It's essentially a meteor that fell out of the sky, and they built like a rock around it. Or, a, or like a dome around it. Oh, really? Yeah. So in the middle of that, you know, house or whatever, little square uh, uh, building, there's a little, there's a meteor in there, and they're like, it's like this weird thing that nobody nobody ever really talks about, but it's this vestige of a pagan religion, right? It's like the Christmas tree, or the, yeah, yeah, where you're just like, we're all worshiping moon rock. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Like the, it fell from the sky, and and like everybody's like, so, but it's a part of the religion. You've got to go around it seven times as part of the. The, the process and every year thousands of people get killed s- just getting stampeded to death during you have, this you have to go fast it there's always <laughs> just an asshole who, who's trying to go too fast that's yeah. why i built in my, my solution to this was get a little moving sidewalk situation <laughs> yeah exactly everybody yeah like the airport you know there's gonna be an asshole though who's trying to get hodge done way quicker than everybody else <laughs> So we're we'll making good time. My father would be that way. He's walking on the on the walking sidewalk. <laughs> if my if my father was Muslim, uh, I mean, I'm not going to rule out the ability that maybe he'll turn. He's one of the most Islamophobic human beings I've ever met in my life. I, I just talk. told him it was Ramadan. And he goes, "How? Why the fuck do you even know that?" I'll tell you why he's so Islamophobic. It's because deep down inside, he knows Allah's making a few good points. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I can't stand it. Uh, but my- ooh, the prophet's so cool. <laughs> If my dad was at Hodge, he, it would be a huge point of pride. Hey, Brian, I was the first one. Did my seven laps. First one, in and out. I did eight. Just to FYI, I just did one extra lap just because, like, I'm t- I had such, such good time. My dad literally <laughs> said to me recently, and I quote, he goes, he goes, oh, well, who gives a shit about Ramadan? It's just made up. Somebody just made it up. And I was like, oh, is my dad turning into, like, a Bill Maher? Yeah. You know? And I was like, yeah, yeah, all religions are made up. And he's and then I go, like, Christmas is made up? He goes, Christmas is not made up. Yeah, of course. Yeah, everybody knows <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Flavius Josephus wrote about Jesus. It's dog. so sad to, like, listen to the, like, half your DNA yeah. say this shit where you're like, that's in me, dog. But, I mean, my dad, my dad says, it's like with my dad, it's the same shit, but about Islam, where it's like, <laughs> these guys believe, these guys believe that. <laughs> God had a son. And God had a kid. Yeah. It's like obviously everybody knows he would have a prophet, a favorite one that he liked more than all the <laughs> other ones. That that makes so much. <laughs> What's the difference between a prophet and like the son of God? Like, is a prophet is 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 uh, a human? He's a human. A prophet is a person. But, like, but he's like touched by God. He's he's uh, uh sort of uh, visited by God or. That's sort of a general connection with him in some capacity. Friends on Facebook, He's connected, <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, they're sort of if if they were following each other on Instagram, it would be like this green circle every time. Would he be in the close friend yeah. section of yeah. God's stories? Exactly. Whenever God updated his story, you would see, he would see it as a prophet, but you and I would not. Yeah, We'd yeah. see the corporate bullshit, right? <laughs> not not all this man. People go loose on those close friends things. It's it's. Uh, <laughs> I don't quite understand the rules of it. I guess it just means like I guess you're cool is sort of what I think yeah, it means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, I can say it in front of you guys. I'm snapping all the pictures. I'm taking it oh, all. Oh, dude, I got a portfolio in my room. Everybody and I know is going down. Just pull out a hard drive. Yeah. Um. 
Okay. So, so Ramadan. 30 Ramadan, days. 30 days. Uh, we'll talk uh, maybe a little bit about that uh, if we have time at the end of the show. It's going to be coming up the whole month. Yeah. We're doing 30 days here, 30 days. Uh, no, so no sex, no smoking, no, no drinking, food, no water, nothing. No backbiting, no uh, no gossiping. That's If you gossip during Ramadan, it's basically breaking your fast. Really? Yeah. So, uh, you know, you got to really, you know, Islam is a lot about peace through submission. Sure. Uh, I'm, you know, and, and a couple other things, but, but mainly peace <laughs> through submission. Yeah. And of course, if they don't submit, you know. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah, you got to get your peace some way or the on other. some level. But yeah. you um, either get P E A C or you get turned into P I E C. I used to have a joke in my act that it was the one time of year where uh, where Muslims terrorize themselves for a change. <laughs> Ramadan, <laughs> yeah, you know. But unfortunately, I could never do it because it was like, how often is Ramadan material gonna <laughs> re- gonna work? Ooh, it's Ramadan. I could bust out that <laughs> chunk. <laughs> All right, so we'll be covering Ramadan throughout the month. Happy Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak to all my uh, my brothers and sisters out there who are listening. And and really, when I say that to my brothers and sisters, Islam, it's clear and cut. <laughs> there's no there's no anywhere in between. Right. You are a brother and a sister. <laughs> and or a sister. And that's that. By the way, we don't mind which one, where you where you started. No. <laughs> I think in Iran, if I'm not mistaken, they they, they forced the sex changes on you if yeah. you're gay. Yeah, well, I, that's one of those stories that I've never double checked. Where it sounds like yeah. that could be a Drudge it's, Report, it's Fox News, probably fake. Yeah, you're probably. Yeah. <laughs> right now, All right, let's uh, let's get into uh, this real quick here. Um, Forty six percent of Americans here, uh, according to this most recent poll. Um, I don't know by Gallup. I'm presuming um, say that they believe that uh, that Dwayne uh, <laughs> Johnson should run for president. Um, I gotta be honest with you. It feels like his numbers are taking a hit. I feel like three years ago it would have been like seventy two. I think three years ago he said he would have ran as a Democrat. Oh, I see. I think because that's what he would have ran as. But I, my theory on forty six percent of Americans would like to see Dwayne the Rock Johnson run for president. I bet if you went into the census stats 46 percent is probably the exact number of how much uh straight women and gay men make up of the country oh yeah okay you're saying that these are this is his his coalition yeah yeah these are just people who are creaming their genes for the rock dude yeah i he uh i can't decide how i feel about him i mean look i'm an arab first and foremost so when i see guns like that i respect them <laughs> But he's got a lot of positivity, a little too positive for the old ram dog. But I do think he has a, he has a dictator in him. I, hope. I mean, wearing sunglasses at press conferences is, a, is quite a dictator move. And you're all right. He is so positive that you're like, there's got to be a dark like, oh, force in there. He's got to have an Ellen thing going on. I've said it. My, my honest to God problem with democracy, it, 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 you know, I, I don't mind a dictator. I think a good dictator. Just call it what it is. A good dictator for seven years is the only system that works. A seven-year dictatorship? You need seven years. So you get rid of the Supreme Court. You get rid of Congress. Yeah. You just have one thing. You need a good dictator for like a good decade. It's hard to find. (laughs) I'm not saying it's easy. (laughs) Do you think The Rock could be him? I would respect. I'll be honest with you. I think a lot of other countries would absolutely start respecting us. I promise you everybody in the Middle East would be like, (gasps) (laughs) (laughs) Astaghfirullahaladzim. What is this? This guy, yeah. this guy, his arm is, oh my God, Hamzi. You think that, you think that like looking like he could whoop your ass goes a long way. North Korea, I promise you, shuts the fuck up. The Middle East shuts the fuck up. Most of those like crazy, like African, you know, war, warring civil war countries, those guys will have, will finally, they'll finally be like, wait, 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 wait we got to get in line right now. But we will be at absolute mutual assured destruction with russia you think putin would look at that putin would be like would those be, are glamour muscles it would be <laughs> i have fighting muscles it would be so <laughs> funny to see putin training soup <laughs> you know he'd be, putin would get <laughs> fucking muscle HGH. injections <laughs> yeah, dude, he would be training so hard he'd be getting facelifts i honestly think that i might want to see the rock as president just to see what it would do to putin's the image body of dysmorphia that putin would just all of a sudden have Putin would spend all of his time lifting and <laughs> eating hard-boiled eggs, yes. and literally, it would be the, a golden era for Russia. Russia yeah. would be like, finally, we can now move forward as a country. <laughs> Putin just... is distracted. 
<laughs> on leg day. I have regiment. Three days a week, I am in weight room. Other four days, I fight the bear. Yeah, he fucking, dude, Putin would lose his mind. It, because Putin's the most masculine leader in the world, right? Yeah, Oh, without a doubt. Right now? Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, you look at Boris Johnson or Joe Biden or even all those dictators and like they're weak. They're, you, we used to have a good couple, good couple strong men in the Middle East, but we got nobody good in the Middle East. Yeah, anymore. the the King of Jordan is kind of jacked. He's he, look, he's a little British he boy. Might be We've soft. talked about it. Yeah, a he might times. be fat he's, when he takes that. He yeah. might be you know just wearing tight enough shirts. Where... Deep, deep down inside, he's he's eating weird meat, weird boiled meat. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. he's a fucking dork. You know, we got nobody. We right Putin now, is, Putin is the guy. Or, yeah, I mean, the other Russian satellite states too, Chechnya. But the, they get all of their shit from him. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. Like he's, he's Alpha King. He's Doug. Alpha King Doug over there. Because because yeah. think about how scary you got to be to scare Alexander Lushchenko. Yeah, Lushchenko, Lukashenko, Lukashenko. Lukashenko. Sure. Also, you know who else would lose his mind? Justin Trudeau. Oh yeah, Justin, Justin Trudeau, Trudeau would no longer Botox, probably lip fillers. <laughs> he would end up looking like a Kardashian by no, the end of his time. No longer the hot chick. Oh yeah, that's so good. Yeah, du- yeah. Dwayne Johnson's hotter than Trudeau. Absolutely. Me. And I'll tell you what. Finally, by the way, a, a nod to Samoa. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like we fucked them over for a long time. I th- probably. I don't really know. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure their history. The territory thing never really. American Samoa isn't that ours. Uh, yeah, because that's the law school uh, the Better Call Saul went to. <laughs> yeah, America. That's all I know about it. I think all I know about America and Samoa is at, it's the one that Bloomberg won uh, when he during the caucus or whatever. Like, oh yes, yes, he, he won yes. eight delegates there. Yeah, yeah. The Guam is over there. I think. Yeah, yeah. it's. I try not to ask too many questions yeah. about what's going on over there. I don't know if we're fucking them over or if we just have like a couple planes parked there and we don't pay attention to them at all. Yeah, I think it's kind of it's one of those situations where I go oh, we'll pay you guys to take care of these planes. I applied to be a park ranger in uh, the American Samoa. And you got turned down? Uh, I never heard back, so I don't like to think I was turned down. Sure. So I probably got lost. <laughs> You're still in consideration. <laughs> yeah. Either I'm going to get the job soon I would, or I got lost. I would love it if tomorrow or, or <laughs> even in like two years, you just got a letter in the mail. That hey, was man. Like, I, uh, we just got the application. And honestly, you're a good fit. I'm moving to American Samoa. It pays $15 <laughs> an hour. <laughs> I get my own canoe. That was in the description. You get your own yeah, canoe. Yeah, you get your own canoe. And that's how you get to work is on a canoe. And I was like, that sounds beautiful. Man, you know what? That would be good for two days. <laughs> two days, and you'd be like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" There's no canoe lifter that I could like get a guy to pedal it out for me. I think it would be okay. It all depends on if you're going upstream to or from work. Because if you're if it's downstream home, I'm good for years like that. I'll go upstream in the morning, consider that a workout, and then oh, dude. crack open a six pack and just zoom home. <laughs> I love the idea of you just getting <laughs> trashed. And just <laughs> Splitting your canoe, wrapping it around a tree. <laughs> I'm doing like a Ted Kennedy. I got like a dead girl <laughs> that dropped because of my canoe accident. Uh, <laughs> man, what what were you going to find a job like that? Like what? Did you, what what oh, were you uh, trying to job posting like that? Like on Craigslist? It's, I forget what the website's. It's like AmericanJobs.gov. You were looking for a government job because yeah, yeah, okay. they have veterans preference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you get like paid more and you get to the top of the list uh, yeah. of applicants. I should go for that. I should just spend a couple years in the army just for all these lists. <laughs> Being be, being in the military is like you have a secret penny saver that nobody has access to, and like it's like a you always get a nice little coupon. Yeah, yeah, I'm always asking if they have military discounts everywhere I go, and oftentimes they do. Harbor Freight just got ten percent off a tool set. I've never worked a job where somebody who, as soon as somebody <laughs> calls me sir, yeah, and I'm going. This guy's gonna ask me for a military discount. Yeah, there's two things that's happening here. He's institutionalized, been to prison several times, or he's a veteran. Yeah. Uh, there's one thing that's for sure: scared of dad. <laughs> yes, without a doubt. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, uh, speaking of Putin, by the way, uh, Biden uh, had a tough call with Putin. Um, I saw this. Uh, uh, I guess they're uh, you know negotiating or whatever. By the way, could you imagine a more challenging phone call to be a part of? Because I I speak English so well, I feel like I would have a tough time following Biden on a phone call. I was just thinking, like, I don't know how they translate, because I don't think Putin speaks English, does he? No, that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, so they have a translator who's strange. There's three, <laughs> there's yeah. three, like, just fucking barriers to communication here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one, it's Biden, 
Two, it's English. Three, it's fucking. He's got an interpreter as well. Yeah, so. I bet the Wi Fi is bad at the White House for some reason. Oh, it's got to be like, bad. Because I imagine it's Zoom. Zoom. Are they Zooming. I'm, I assume, right? Or I imagine Putin was was insisted on doing it in person. Yeah, yeah. I imagine he wants to look him eye to eye. You know, he's probably shirtless. <laughs> Tell him he's not scared of the virus. Yeah, yeah. Why are they zooming? By the way, well, I guess I mean it's fine. But aren't they all vaccinated? Like, what is their deal? I, I think Biden can't make those trips, dude. Yeah, he can't be just flying to did, Russia. Did you see the video he posted? I posted this. Uh, I put the link for for the video. He came out today and he did a press conference, or maybe this was yesterday. Uh, calling for an end to uh, the Afghanistan war. Uh, 4K is not made for the man, right? I'm not even made for... When, when, dude, when you see me in 4K, I look like he looks like in standard. Yeah, he does not... <laughs> you do... Yes. <laughs> Nobody looks that... You have to be so good looking for 4K to work. I look horrible John in John Hamm looks awful in 4K. For real. It's not a good... What, why are we doing this to There's ourselves? There's no reason for it. It's only sports should be shown. Only sports should be shown. Everything Athletes else. Athletes look good. Athletes look amazing in 4K. Yeah. I'd love to, those guys who were who hunted those baboons. If I could see them in 4K, <laughs> ooh, you leave your girlfriend if you saw that in ooh, 4K. <laughs> I'd move to Zambia right now. <laughs> uh, Biden, you know Bi- what was funny about the way Biden looks is uh, look. Put, play this clip of him real quick. Doesn't he just look like somebody's always got an Instagram filter of his face on him? It, it does. Like Kyle Dunnigan is doing him or it, whatever. We yeah. already have service members doing their duty in Afghanistan today, <laughs> whose parents served in the same war. His teeth are wooden. service members who were not yet born when our nation was attacked in 9-11. His teeth aren't real, right? No. War Those are fakers. in Afghanistan was never meant to be a multi-generational undertaking. We were attacked. How does that work? They just we knock out your teeth? With clear goals. Um... We achieve those. Because his teeth are actually distracting and, me right now. Well, w- there's a couple ways. They could yank out all your teeth and give you, or he has like puzzle piece type Ooh. dentures where he's got like seven good teeth and they, so they don't put implants there and you just pop it in. I want that. I got a couple <laughs> teeth I could get plucked out and just fucking give me some, give me some fucking fake chompers. Right, right. And they're all on a, like a metal thing and you just oh, pop dude. them right in. I would seriously, I really would love to do that. I, I, I'm going to get my passport done and get that done in Mexico. Come back with a You're different guy. Palestine small- in the summer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. Some dental work done. Uh, well, I don't know, man. I'm not sure if I trust the Palestinian <laughs> dental work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what it used to be. All right, let's listen to him mumble through the rest of this. It's only 10 more seconds. Laden is dead. <laughs> Wait, I want to hear that again. And Al Qaeda is degraded in Iraq, in Afghanistan. <laughs> and it's time to end the forever war. What? Yeah, he's uh <laughs> he's wasted. He said according to him by 9/11 they're going to withdraw all the troops from Afghanistan. He wants to make it ceremonial uh, like that, like it's on 9-11. Yeah, 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 sort of like if you watch 9-11 in reverse or whatever. Right. Like, yeah. It sort of ends. It's like we had uh, – yeah, I don't know. I don't know really how it works either, <laughs> but I feel like it kind of works. To me, it's kind of weird to be ceremonious about a war crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, because – Here's here's what's extra fucked up about it is Afghanistan had nothing to do with 9/11. No. <laughs> so you're you're now more falsely implicating them with the crime. Yeah, by, it's actually genius. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, because it's Saudi Arabia that and it's Saudi, Saudi money, Saudi mines. Yes, engineered 9/11, but they just were living in Afghanistan. Yeah, it, it's a completely. It, it falsely pins 9/11 on not, on Afghanistan it's completely. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like oh whatever. Well, every whatever anybody thinks about Afghanistan is fucked at this point. Sorry, <laughs> their their reputation ain't coming back. Right, and we'll, also it's we'll like lighten this match. And now to declare victory, to say Al Qaeda. First of all, Al Qaeda is not even close to done. But the other thing is, it's oh, like, are you, dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> I fucking I'm, I'm I subscribe to their Mailchimp. <laughs> I get their mail, their, their newsletters. Yeah, they're those doing guys, fine. Those guys are not even close to done. No. They just built another school. They just put out a ten point plan. It's <laughs> it's gonna it's unbelievable. The future they have, it's unbelievable. Oh, the year to year to year growth on them is unbelievable. <laughs> Eight percent year over year growth. The West African expansion is going through the roof. It's a complete success. Five years ahead of schedule. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So they, uh, but also like Taliban. The Taliban is 
back in charge again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're pulling. I mean, I'm not saying we need to stay there. Taliban but... had a little respect for Trump, dude. They really did. They were yeah, a little yeah. scared of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is what I'm saying. They would fucking tremble if they saw The Rock. <laughs> the Rock? I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, if you were The Rock, you could move to any of those countries and run those countries. They would king. They would absolutely get out of your way. <laughs> um, speaking of, uh, we've been talking a lot about prison on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to uh, – okay, so th- there's a lot about this story that really made me laugh. So the headline to this story is uh, Connecticut defends prison porn ban as boon to female staff. So what they're saying is that the Connecticut state is defending their uh, ban on inmates having porn, and the reason why they use it is because uh, they think it makes female staff safer Yeah, by not having porn. Now – there's a couple of things. I have a couple of thoughts on this, but the first thing that popped out to me was that the lawyer who's defending the inmates, there's the lawyer who took the case yeah. to try to get porn in prisons is doing it pro bono, <laughs> which is hilarious. Yeah, of course. Of course. Who takes that case for free? Because I've heard of pro bono, but pro boner? <laughs> and the man is very pro boner. I, I, I didn't want to say it, but I'm glad you did. Well, of course. I'm, uh, as everybody knows, I know that people were really racking their brain trying to find a good one. Yeah, this man's very pro boner for sure. But um, they're saying that the porn like gets guys all riled up and like makes them. Sh- Essentially, what they're saying is that this protects the female officers from lewd comments, but like it doesn't protect the other male inmates from dudes with giant hard ons who don't get to jerk off to porn. I mean, I imagine that like they are just fucking the shit out of dudes. Oh, I think porn is probably helping them at least a little bit because they're not. Let's be clear. They're not watching Reality Kings or 8th Street Latinas. No, or, no, 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 no. Or Mike's Apartment or any of these fucking hardcore pornographers. It's Playboy. They're not watching Brazzers or Reality Kings or... <laughs> Fake Taxi. Not even um, by America or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, any of these things. <laughs> <laughs> they're not watching... Any, they're not watching... I watch it. Celebrity skin, bang bros, yeah. you know, my bang bus, my free uh, VIP dot com, milf hunter, new milf hunter, yeah. Latina milkmaids, <laughs> Captain Stevin, uh, you know, back room. <laughs> They're, they're not, not watching that kind of porn. Watching nubile films. <laughs> they're yeah. not watching vixen video. Big boob bangaroo. <laughs> That's uh, Australian, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to big boob bangaroo. <laughs> they're watching. They're looking at Playboys. That's all they're looking at. Like it's printed media. Printed media. They're, they're printed doing, media pretty much only exists for inmates. They're doing. They're the most well-read Americans in the world now. Uh, honestly, they really are. Yeah. They really are. I, I they they're at this point I I would probably venture a, a guess that the average prisoner reads more than the average American. That's why I want to go to prison so badly. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, finish that book. I wrote down I copied and pasted from WebMD the side effects of porn addiction. Uh-huh. And it says right here, it says that uh, it's used to manage anxiety. It's a, it uses a distraction. You, uh, people tend to lose days to it. It ruins sex drive. I wrote my sex drive. Yeah, it but seems it, like a Freudian slip. Yeah. yeah. Ru- it ruins sex drives. It can make you impotent. It can make you tired and take naps. Like, all of that is upside if you're in prison. Yeah. I, it Every seems- single <laughs> thing that that said is an upside. Yeah. If I'm sleeping, the more, if I'm in prison, the more I'm napping, the better. Let's Truly. let this go away. If I'm impotent, that's great. No temptation there. Our goal should be to try to get everybody in prison to be napping as frequently as possible. And I don't you... know what we're doing getting them up. And... <laughs> yeah, I know. Why are we waking them up at 5 a.m.? <laughs> Giving them weight benches and shit. <laughs> Let's get them jacked. You know what? Let's get this child molester. When this child molester walks out of here, I want him to look like The Rock. <laughs> Let's get him up. Let's get him moving. It's 5 a.m., man. Let's not let him waste the day. Like, dude, this guy, let's let him sleep till one. Yeah, there's no reason to get up. You know what, man? It's totally true. It's really fucked up, man. Just Everything about porn addiction, it breaks your dick. Like Bobby Lee was talking about that the other day. He had to stop watching porn because he couldn't get it up. I think a, a world where inmates aren't getting it up is a safer world for both inmates and the women staffers. <laughs> yeah. Like you, Maybe you'll hear like you know a cat call or whatever, but if they're all drained. I got to say, yeah. I mean, look, man. <sighs> You can't be working as a prison guard and 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 you know not be uh, you subjected know, ex- to subjected to some some rough some work abuse, conditions. some verbal abuse. It just is what it is. Yeah, the, one of the arguments that the um, one of the ladies uh, correction officers who's going after him 
are like they're they're talking about how they're like there's no other workplace where we would even have to consider being confronted with porn. Yeah, and it's like, well, there's a lot in your business. Yeah. That doesn't happen in other workplaces. I don't know how much shower rape is going on at, you know. Yeah. How much uh, scraping feces <laughs> off of walls do you think music executives yeah. are dealing do you with? Think on people like Google are cleaning bathroom floors with toothbrushes. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's fucking happening. <laughs> It's not a good argument. Yeah, I, way, I'm the pro bono loan lawyer. <laughs> yeah, you're the pro bono. Uh, you'll you'll get you'll get them off. Yeah, this says erotica is still available to the Connecticut inmates. They I all- actually want you to uh, respect what I just said. <laughs> What'd you say? I said you'll get them off. Yeah, like yeah, get them off. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, but also like, that's great. Like off. <laughs> From being in trouble, I was just I was plowing over you because I was so excited to find out that they still make Victoria's Secret catalogs. Ooh! <laughs> so they're getting Sports Illustrated swimsuit editions, Victoria's Secret. We gotta catalogs. frame up. A, I'm gonna frame up a fucking uh, a Victoria's Secret uh, catalog yeah. for this for the new studio. Those angels, remember the Heidi Klum angel? Yeah, dude. If I was fucking, I mean, if you're nostalgic for the way you know used to jerk off when we were kids, go to jail. It's a trip down memory lane. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not when we were kids. Obviously, I'm a, a different generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. if a 19 year old walked in the room, they would think you were younger than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a. Uh, uh, I'm I, sure they know, would. I see what you're saying. Though. Yeah, 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 I totally understand it. All right, man. Let's uh, let's call it, let's call it quits. You know, we have this great video here. I was gonna say we could watch it. Uh, it's this uh, this employee beating the shit out of her employee, uh, her her manager with a mop. But we'll we'll save it for the Patreon. Be sure to follow the show across all social media platforms at Worst Hour Pod. You guys are fantastic. Join our Patreon, patreon.com slash WHOTW. Um, let's see here. Five bucks a month. Get yourself so much extra content and fun. And by the way, you become an insider. Like they, it's not like they didn't get the episodes late, but they knew that they were getting yeah, the episodes heads late. up. I mean, it's really like so they're not living in chaos. Like part of the stress and anxiety <laughs> of the main feed is the chaos and you live in. But if you want to, if you, I mean, listen, if you know it's coming on Thursday, it's not. It's like how Amazon is like, hey, sorry, this arrived at the Pomona warehouse a day late. Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. you'll get this on Friday instead of Thursday. Yeah, that exactly. feels a lot better than being all Thursday being like, where the fuck is it? I got an I got an email from Amazon yesterday that was like, hey, just letting you know that we are no longer carrying this shark fin energy drink. Uh, we realized that and it's illegal. Did you have you ever gotten one of those emails where they're like, I didn't even know you guys were doing like it's like, no, I haven't got this. we didn't realize that this product that they were doing was actually made from the bones of a of an extinct. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, these weaves were made from scalped Indian girls and uh, we didn't know they sent me an email. Talk. I'm like, did. They had an Keep energy the- drink with shark fin in it? It wasn't an energy drink, but it was like a shark fin something or the other. <laughs> like, keep that to yourself, man. Yeah. It wasn't even like... Just stop selling it. <laughs> yeah, they quietly take it off the market, dude. It's like a, you're an AA and you're making amends and you're doing the wrong apology to the wrong person. I'm not going to send out a blast to everybody, but just so you know, <laughs> we took down the podcast where Brian said the R word. Yeah, we yeah, we, yeah. Put yeah, it, yeah, we exactly. took it down, so it's not there anymore. We get it. He's yeah. We took it down. But it's up on the Patreon. <laughs> Five dollars a month. www.patreon.com backslash W hot W. Do you got anything else you want to say to these people, yes, Brian? If you got nothing else to say, I got nothing else to say. On behalf of me, you, everybody of the worst hour nation, peace be on to the prophet. Thank you for listening to the worst hour of the week with Brian Vokey and Ramsey Badawi. Peace be unto the prophet. Okay.